everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Dr. Jenny Beck. I am a chiropractor, but uh, with this channel, I'm not going to be talking so much about chiropractic. What I really want to discuss is hearing loss and different aspects of hearing loss. I'm hard of hearing. I uh, have been since, well, it was discovered when I was three. So it could have been uh, when I was born because I did have some oxygen loss at birth or as a result of the numerous ear infections I had as a toddler. Uh, like very many people, um, I had one year of preschool where I was in a program for children who are hard of hearing and then I was mainstreamed in a public school. And that really ended my interaction with ki other kids who were hard of hearing or deaf. So I grew up a lot of times feeling very isolated, um, not quite knowing where I fit in, not quite understanding. I'll just wait for this pass. Not quite understanding uh, why I struggled with so some of the things that I did. Um, and it really continued that way until my 20s when I started to meet a few other people who were hard of hearing. And then in my 30s, I discovered that there are support groups online for people who are hard of hearing. So if you are hard of hearing or you're deaf, um, is particularly if you are not part of the deaf community, because I know that the deaf community is very supportive. They have their own culture. They have their own language, sign language. Um, and it's really this very tight knit group, but for those of us who didn't grow up in that community, it can be hard to break in and it can lead to a lot of people feeling very isolated. So if you are feeling very isolated and uh, you're the only one that you know that's hard of hearing or deaf or you only know a few other people, I highly encourage you to find a hearing loss support group. Uh, there's a big one on LinkedIn and there are several on Facebook and those are the only platforms that I really use but I'm quite sure that there are others on some of the other social media platform uh, plus there are oftentimes local, local support groups in your area. Um, for me there's, there's one about 30 minutes away that's a local support group, so uh, you can look at uh, advocacy, advocacy groups as well, which will provide you with some support. So what's the purpose behind this channel? I really just want to address different aspects of hearing loss that I think people don't really understand. Uh, for instance, you know, some people learn, lose their hearing as a child, some people lose their hearing later, later in life. Um, so the adaptability a lot of times is going to depend on at what point you lost your hearing, um, whether you're able to lip read, uh, whether you adjust uh, to the loss of hearing, or whether you've always experienced it. Uh, like for me, I really can't remember a time when I didn't have hearing loss. So, you know, it can be kind of difficult for me to know what I'm supposed to be hearing since I've never experienced that. So there's that aspect to it, but then there's also things that a lot of people don't really talk about. Uh, listening fatigue. I didn't understand about listening to fatigue until a few years ago. And it would have really helped me to know what listening fatigue was um, when I was in school because it was something I experienced and basically, listening fatigue is mental exhaustion that happens when you're having to listen for a long period of time. And because for someone that has hearing loss, we oftentimes don't hear all of the speech sounds. For me, I don't hear S's. It can be hard for me to hear SH. Um, it can be hard for me to distinguish between CH, SH, and TH. It can be hard for me to distinguish between a D and a P and a K sound. So when I'm listening to someone talking, a lot of times 
I really have to fill in the blanks on what they're saying. Um, it means that my mind has to do this mental gymnastics, taking what I hear, this jumble of noise, and transforming it into an actual sentence, an actual set of set of words. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. And, and then I rely heavily on lip reading, which was always a bit of a challenge for me um, when I was in school, particularly chiropractic school, because when I would write, handwrite my notes, obviously I can't lip read. And yes, I know there's um, cart and there's a number of assisted listening devices now, but I wasn't familiar with that then. I didn't know how to access those resources. I had uh, chosen to not get that support when I went to high school uh, for reasons wanting to fit in and having been bullied and all of that. So when I went to college, I didn't know that I was eligible for that. Um, so I really struggled. Um, but I've de developed some strategies that have helped me, which I will be sharing with you over the course of these videos uh, so that they can help you. Uh, but if you are a student and uh, or you're in, a, in the workforce and you're having to do a lot of seminars and workshops or in a place where you're constantly having meetings, you are eligible through the Americans with Disabilities Act. If you're in, if you're in America, if you are not, uh, check your country's uh, legal rulings for all of this but you are eligible for a lot of resources and particularly in the schools so i would highly urge you that if you're struggling uh, to find out what resources you're eligible for at least uh, try and get caught because that's called captioning in real time so they'll bring in someone to type your notes for you and type captions for you so that you can just concentrate on focusing on what your lecturer and your instructor is saying uh, rather than having to struggle. Like for me, the minute I put my head down uh, to start taking notes or the minute I look away or if someone uh, turns their back to me, my comprehension goes way down because I lip read far more than I realize. And especially now in this time of mask, it's been rather difficult for me, and as it has been for a lot of people who are hard of hearing or deaf, uh, we depend on lip reading often to be able to communicate. And that doesn't mean that lip reading is perfect. That doesn't mean that you can lip read 100% of what someone is saying. But especially for someone that's hard of hearing, it can be a form of assistance. It's a way to help determine what is being said um, because a lot of words sound the same. So, yeah, if you're struggling with listening fatigue or you f feel like um, you're just exhausted at the end of the day or you're trying to write down what people are saying and like I did, you have a, a stack of, you know, half finished sentences because you only heard half of what was being said, uh, I heard, highly urge you to look into the resources that you are entitled to. So, but I also want to address a lot of different factors that go along with listening and fatigue and that strategies that can help, help you for me. Like, mnemonics was huge. Uh, just something about that, um, and all those little silly sentences that stood for pieces of information really helped me grasp uh, and re memorize what's going on. Because when you are focused so intently just on understanding what's being said, you don't have the resources to memorize the information, at least not, not as well. So, that one was key for me. And uh, deep breathing, breathing exercises was key for me in order to focus. 
I would find myself doodling a lot and doodling is actually very good because it helps you resist the tendency to daydream and it's a way to keep your mind focused um, because while you are distracted uh, it still keeps your brain more on alert so water what is is huge when it comes to focus staying hydrated um, your the amount of focus that you have and the amount you're able to concentrate drops significantly even when you're slightly dehydrated making sure that you have an adequate diet of fat and proteins those can really help um, in order to keep your blood sugar stable and keep you from crashing later on later on during the day uh, so just different strategies like that but the main thing is really understanding that you have listening fatigue and what it is and knowing when you need to take a break because a lot of times we just think we're going to power through and push through and our brains just get exhausted our minds get exhausted and then we've spent, you know, most of the seminar, most of the class time just kind of, you know, in our own little world, daydreaming or, you know, zoned out and not really focused on what is going on around us because we are exhausted. And if we take that time to step away, to take a little bit of a break, or when we do get a break, uh, like in a seminar, uh, if we choose to step outside and go away from people, uh, step out into the hallway instead of having conversations or doing round table, that can often be extremely helpful. So yeah, that's just um, one part of the topic of the numerous topics that I want to cover, uh, tinnitus, you know, deaf and hearing loss, and related anxiety is another one, the feelings of isolation. So all of these I'm going to be covering over the next different series of videos. And feel free to ask me any questions or if there's a topic that you want me to talk about or chime in on, let me know. So I'm excited to get started again. Uh, I'm going to say again because I did start this channel but at a little bit of a different intention. And so now I'm really focusing it on this particular area. So I'm excited to get started with all of you and to get to know you through the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and all of that so that you can uh, get some information on different topics and you don't miss a video that uh, may be helpful for you or that you would want to engage with. Okay, thank you. Bye.